So it's important for us to diagnose hypertensive crisis and then start managing it. So as I mentioned, whenever the systolic is more than 180 and diastolic is more than 120 millimeters, it's a hypertensive crisis. So we need to seriously look whether the patient has any tar target organ damage, whether it is progressing or worsening. So if there is a damage to the target organ, so it is an hypertensive emergency, we need to take the situation very seriously. It's always advisable to keep the patient uh, under monitoring in an intensive care situation where we need to exclude conditions like aortic dissection. Or if the patient happens to be pregnant, we need to look at preeclampsia, eclampsia, or even exclude pheochromocytoma, which often presents a hypertensive crisis. So whenever we look at them, of course, if there are any such above situations, so we try to reduce the blood pressure systolic to less than 140 millimeters right in the first hour and to even up to 120 millimeter if you are dealing with aortic dissection. Of course, if there are no such situations, the blood pressure can be brought down by 25 percent in the first hour, then subsequently we can take about two to six hours to bring it down to at least 160 systolic, 100 to 110 millimeters of uh, mercury for diastolic. And if you go back to the, the upper part of the slide, if we have a situation of hypertensive crisis and there is no tar target organ damage, patient has markedly elevated blood pressure, so you reinstitute or intensify the oral medication whatever patient is taking and uh, if required you add more medication which can be by and large an oral one and do a proper follow-up of these individuals. So in the hypertensive emergencies if you see according to AHA and ACC guidelines, these are defined as severe elevation of blood pressure more than systolic 180, diastolic 120 millimeters which are associated with evidence of new or worsening target organ damage. So there can be a fresh target organ damage or it could be already a pre-existing target organ damage. So the selection of the appropriate antihypertensive agent should be based on the pharmacology of the drug we are using and the underlying pathophysiology factors and the degree of the progression of the target damage that the individual has and the rate of blood pressure that you want to bring it down depending on the comorbid conditions that are there. So for example, you have drugs like ismalol and uh, labetalol, which are both uh, beta and alpha blockers which can be given intravenously and which are very effective and they can be used uh, also in acute di aortic dissection where you want to bring down the blood pressure faster to a normal level. You have drugs like hydrolyzine, which is basically a vasodilator and one of the old antihypertensive molecules. Then there is a labetalol, which is an alpha beta blocker, which is popular. Then you have nicardipine, which is a calcium channel blocker. So these are all preferred in case of eclampsia and preeclampsia. You can use one of these three drugs. Most of the times we use them orally to bring down the blood pressure. Of course, if you are treating patients with acute renal failure, with very uh, high, high blood pressure, you can use clivedipinine, you can use phenaldepam or you can use uh, one of the calcium channel blockers that is nicardipine. So when you are talking about antihypertensive agents in these emergency situations, so we have a calcium channel blockers which are dihydropyridine derivatives like a nicardipine. Initially you can give 5 milligrams and you can rapidly increase the dose every 5 minutes to up to the extent of 15 milligrams every hour to bring down the blood pressure to desirable level. Clivedipine is another alternate molecule that you have amongst these uh, dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers. Of course, you have a vasodilator like uh, nitric oxide dependent one, sodium nitroprusside, which is again given intravenously to rapidly bring down the blood pressure. You need to monitor the dosage and reduce the dosage when the blood pressure comes to a desirable level. Even a popular vasodilator like nitroglycerine can be given 
intravenously to bring down the blood pressure. We also have uh, vasodilators like hydralazine, which are available both orally and intravenously. In an emergency situation, you always try to use a IV hydralazine to bring it to normal level. So, talking more about the other drugs, we have adrenergic blockers. These are beta-1 receptor selective antagonists like ismolol. We can again give it as an infusion as 50 micrograms per kilogram every minute. We can titrate the dose up to the 200 micrograms every kilo of the weight every minute. We also have Lebitalol, which I mentioned to earlier, which is a alpha-1 as well as a beta receptor agonist, which is also effective antihypertensive given when given parentally, and it is also safe to titrate the dose. We have, of course, drugs like pentalamine and phenodepam, which are not very much widely used these days because of the availability of ismolol and uh, labitalol. You have a dopamine 1 receptor selective antagonist like phenaldepam, which is again like pentalapine. We have an ACE inhibitor which is popular, um, the analepril molecule. We can use it initially with 1.25 milligrams over 5 minute uh, period. This is how we give it uh, parentally and uh, which is also a safe antihypertensive when given parentally. So in hypertensive urgencies, we must understand these are associated with uh, severe blood pressure elevation as mentioned earlier. Otherwise, the stable patients, there is no acute or impending change in target damage or dysfunction. The patients are usually asymptomatic but may experience symptoms like headache, shortness of breath and epistaxis. So we should remember some of these hypertensive urgencies may be asymptomatic. Most of these patients are also non-compliant with the antihypertensive drugs. That's how they might have ended up with hypertensive urgencies and they usually do not have clinical or laboratory evidence of uh, any acute target organ damage as explained. These patients should be treated by institution and intensifying the medication and uh, oral short-acting drugs like captopril, which is an ACE inhibitor, then labetalol, which we have spoken about, and clonidine is a centrally acting drug, which also can be used in some of these people if they don't respond to the earlier drugs. Students, uh, hypertensive crisis is a, an important situation to detect and properly manage. It's always where we institute uh, urgent treatment in these patients. We should also differentiate between hypertension crisis with target organ damage, without target organ damage. If there is no target organ damage, most of the patients may just require proper titration of the dosage or maybe addition of another oral drug. But whenever there is a situation where there is a target organ damage, we need to take this hypertensive crisis more seriously. We need to keep the patient under watch in intensive care unit. It is also important that we should know what are the intravenous antihypertensive drugs that are available, the dosage schedule, and the way that we have to monitor, make sure the blood pressure is rapidly brought down to the normal levels. Thank you.